Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, we retouch a photo of a beautiful hotel in Paris. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to episode 75 of my photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris. All right, this is a very special episode because before I do the tutorial, I will give you the result of the competition based on last episode of the best sunsets. You will find out before the tutorial who the winner is and some of my favorite picks. Uh, also, before we do the tutorial, as promised, I have also completed the interior design photography course. All right, so now let's get to the competition. Let's check out the tutorial and I will show you a little presentation of my interior design training afterwards. All right, so let's first start by the competition and give you the result. Now, I got a lot more than I expected in terms of uh, return. So thank you very much for everybody that sent it. And it's true that uh, me and Kelvin, who is helping me, we only looked at uh, the one that sent JPEG. If you send raw files, uh, th this was not part of the competition because we just couldn't deal with that. So we only look at JPEGs that were sent on competition at photosearch.com, which was what I announced in the last video. Uh, so, before I give you the winner, the, I want to show you some that I really liked and uh, that I want to talk about. Starting with this one, this is the before photos. This is a photo from Croatia from a man named, so I'm sorry if I misspell the name, but I'm French. So, Jens Weld uh, sent this photo from Croatia. This is the before and that's the after. I like, you know, how he did the retouching, how the sun is really there and it's... Uh, a bit foggy. I don't know. I just I I have like an an, an emotion, uh, you know, metering, and uh, I just for me it's really uh, giving me emotion. And then I have another one that I liked. It's from Paul Gamble. It's just a simple pull. That's the before photo, but look at the final result. I think it's very dramatic. It's very. Um, it would make a perfect. Uh, yeah, it's a very good framing. I like the reflection. I like you know how the, the sunset. It's just uh, breathtaking. It's really nice. Okay, another one that I liked a lot. Uh, this one is from Robert Williamson. And uh, this is the before photo, and that's the after photo. I like how the pass goes toward the sun. Uh, I like the foreground, middle ground, and background elements. So these are not winners, it's just photo that I like. And now the winner is uh, Dominic Sadowski. Uh, I love that photo. Now check it out. This is the before photo, and this is the final result. It's a surfer, which you can see here, and uh, look, uh, you know, the sun is like, it looks like the sun is rising. It's very saturated, but I love that. You know, you can see the footstep. I mean, I think one of the hardest things there is in photography is to get a good composition. And often we have too much stuff going on. Look how simple the photo is. You know, one man, surfer, a bit of footstep, and just the water and the sun. I don't know, I just, I think this photo really, from an emotional impact, uh, yeah, it really touched me. So, thank you very much. Now, one thing I'm going to do is that next week, I'm going to show more photos and give you some photo critiques so that, uh, you know, you can maybe learn from what, well, mistakes or things that could be improved and what I like and what I don't like. Of course, this is only my opinion. My opinion might be totally wrong, but at least I have an opinion. So, uh, I'm going to show you some more photos, but anyways, the winner is Dominique Sadowski, so very well done, and you will receive my brand new interior design uh, photography course for free, and I will send it to you tomorrow or after tomorrow, so thank you very much, uh, and so now, let's get to the tutorial. As I'm releasing the interior design photography course, I wanted to show you a little, some little tricks on shooting interior design, starting with this photo, and I'm gonna give you that raw file. This is a photo taken in Paris from an hotel called The Région, and this is to show you the importance of, um, of also the white balance. And the owner of the hotel uh, sent me there, and he already had many photographers come and shoot this room, and every time the, 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 the room came out not so nice. And um, it took me a long time to find a framing that could be interesting, and I actually went down low. And if you do follow my interior design course, you will see I talk a lot about how to find the right composition. Uh, I'm not going to give you, uh, I'm just going to give you a, a few tips. Now on this photo, uh, the, uh, the white balance is completely wrong. 
So that's the first thing I'm going to I'm going to change because uh, it just hurts my eyes to have such a wrong white balance. And instead of using the sliders or playing around with like daylight or, you know, shade or whatever, you know, any of the pre stuff, I'm going to use this. And I'm going to go on something very white. And this this will take any color cast out. Then I'm going to do my shadows. Now on the highlights, usually I bring down. And on this one, I think I'm going to keep up like this and make it even a bit brighter. And the white point, I'm going to press the Alt key. Now the white point, I don't care that these uh, lamps inside are very burned. I don't care for that. And the black points, I think I'm going to go just a little bit. I want to go for a high key look uh, to make it ver really shine. So first thing that I do is I make it already shine pretty much. OK, next thing that I'm going to do is I just want to complexify the light a bit more. So I'm going to take the right filter and make one right filter here. OK, so far it looks really weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert them see now what's happening is that i've i boosted the exposure and what's happening is that everything around the circle is becoming bright that's not what we want we want we want inside of the circle so you have to invert the mask and now it's the opposite okay uh okay not that bright just a little bit touch and you can also feather the mask you see if i go left it's going to make you know, the circle is going to be like a perfect white circle. And if I go right, it's going to be completely soft. I want it to be very soft. I just want to complexify a little bit the light. So one here. And once I have that, then I press the Alt and Command key and drag and drop that here. And drag and drop that here. And drag and drop that here. So four circles. Okay. Maybe one more here, by the way. Okay. And that's just, I should before and after. It's just complexing the light. I'm going to close that and I'm actually going to boost even more the exposure. I'm going to go and uh, into now the, the, the photo when I started was a bit underexposed. So one thing you need to make sure is to watch for is when you overexpose, underexpose something, it always brings noise. So le uh, let me zoom in on the, on the bed and I can see it's a bit grainy. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get the noise reduction around 30 or 40. And the sharpening, I'm going to get around, yeah, 60. Because I always do 100 minus the amount of noise reduction. So that's one thing. And then I'm going to go to the lens correction, enable the profile correction, which is going to make it even brighter, which I like that. Remove chromatic aberration in case there is some. And I'm going to go for the auto upright, see if that does anything better. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, and uh, I think I'm going to crop this photo just a little bit to get this blue out of the way to make it a bit, a bit more design okay now let me show you the before and after this um okay no that's not the before and after so let me reset it that's the before that's where we came from and command z to undo the reset that's the after that's where we are the reason the backslash key is not working is, but is that I've been trying different things on this photo before I recorded the tutorial. So don't send me a mail saying you can do back, back, sorry, backslash on the before and after. I actually know that, but you know when you do things to a photo and you do a tutorial on it, it doesn't work anymore. Anyways, so that's one thing. That's the starting point. Uh, I mean, a good starting point already. But you see, the bed is just catching my eyes. You know, the wrinkle on the bed. And the room actually was not finished and there was supposed to be a cover here that's not there. So we have to correct that. So right click, edit, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. And um, all right, it's opening up in Photoshop CC. And I just wanna, that's one trick that I do a lot is I just wanna blur the bed so that the wrinkles on the bed don't attract so much attention because from an unconscious viewpoint, this is really catching the eyes. Uh, and I do uh, a lot more example in my interior design professional course. But just so I duplicate the background, I go to filter, um, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to go, yeah, 16 is good. And then I'm going to hide that layer by pressing the Alt key and pressing on a mask tool here. That's going to add everything that's there. 
Now make sure white is a foreground color. I'm going to take a brush. Okay, and I'm going to brush with white here. And I'm just going to, I'm at 82% of opacity. And I'm just going to brush because I want this bed to uh, not drag so much attention to the eye. Okay, I'm going to zoom in even more on the pillow. Okay. And I just want to make the pillow fuzzy, a bit more fuzzy. And last but not least, I'm going to go down and I'm just painting with white and same thing, this bed stuff that sheet that was missing, I'm going to take it out. Okay. And if you do something like this, like you go too much here and it looks kind of weird, just press X and X is black as the full one color. And you know, the, you know, the way the mask works with Photoshop is that the white reveal and the black conceals. So the white uh, basically is revealing, uh, sorry, is revealing the blur. And that's what we want. We want to reveal the blur. And the whole idea is just to have less attention on that. And people don't even notice that, uh, you know, you did that. It's funny because I've never somebody came to me and say, oh, did you blur that bed or something? No. Okay, that's the before, that's the after. If you think it's too much, okay, sorry, before. Oops, before, after. If you see so much, you can always lower the opacity. And then that's when you would take care of any uh, sensor dust or anything else. Okay, so command W to close, save. I'm gonna re-import this into Lightroom and uh, show you the final before and after. Because when you go into Photoshop and you do some retouching and you come back into Lightroom, it creates like a TIFF file. So then I can just take my original DNG file reset it so we came from this and now we are here and uh and the owner was like actually this was a test photo that was the first photo i did and he hired me to redo the entire hotel just based on that one photo so that was a good success story for me voila so that was this week's tutorial and now i'm going to show you just a little presentation of my new interior design photography course and i hope you do check it out the amazing thing is that for Thanksgiving, we are giving, this is the first time I've ever done it, 40% on my entire website on anything, including the interior design photography course, which is coming out today. And that's going to be for the whole period of Thanksgiving. So check it out. It's the best time for you to buy something from me. It's the cheapest you can get it. I will never go uh, below 40% and it's for the holidays. So check it out. And now, here is my presentation of my interior design photography course. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Over the last months, I've been working on a training called the Interior Design Professional Training Course. The idea of this training is to really show you how you can photograph and retouch interior design photo, whether it is hotels, restaurants, nice rooms, interior design, whatever it is. A couple of months ago, I was in Paris shooting a hotel called the Felicia. It's a four-star hotel in Paris. And I brought a cameraman with me who followed me around so I could explain exactly how I shoot the rooms, the position I take exactly, the gear that I use, the mistakes that I do, what is working, what is not working, and all the different tricks I have learned over the last eight years doing this job. So first, we're going to start with a live video where I explain you that and you will see directly the raw files that I'm going with. And then we're going to go over to Lightroom. And then on Lightroom, I will really start retouching all these photos that we took on the live videos and show you how I come to the final result. There's all kind of little tips and tricks with Lightroom, but also with Photoshop to really get very good result. I know that a lot of people want to start into photography. And I think that shooting interior design is one of the easiest way to start making money with photography. Why? Because there is so much hotel, so much restaurant, so much night buildings around where people invested millions of dollars where they need really good and very strong photos. And my observation has been that if you can deliver a photo that will create an emotional impact, you will be recommended over and over and you won't have so much hard time or marketing tricks to find some jobs. Believe me, the word of mouth is still the best promotion out there. And I have found nothing that works better than just getting a client totally happy about his photos, 
who will speak to everybody about them, speak about them. That really is the fastest and best way to get customers. Honestly, over the last eight years, it's been now at least five years that I did not need to do really any marketing to find interior design job because the word of mouth. So what I've been trying to do in this training, which is almost three hours long, is to really take you through all the steps on really becoming a professional interior design photographer. Uh, I don't use flash. I do everything with several exposures if needed and everything in Lightroom and Photoshop. And I try to really explain you from the start to the end how you can do this job and all that has worked for me over the last eight years. I hope you will enjoy it and get something out of it. So you can download it on my website on tutorials. Thank you very much. Okay guys, I hope you like that tutorial and the interior design presentation and that you will check it out. I think even if you're not into interior design, you will learn tons of stuff. Thank you very much for your support. I do hope you enjoyed that training and I'll see you in the next episode.